Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And this is the last video for Chapter 3, which I'm calling Characterizing Multivariate Data. Let's jump to today's topic, which is measures of overall variability. Now, with a single variable in univariate analysis, to describe the variability in the data, we use what's called the sample variance, which is the average square difference difference from the sample mean adjusted for bias and that's what we use but when we have a p variables collected on a unit so we have a vector of variables how do we describe the variation well we use the sample covariance matrix so it has the variances down the diagonal and the covariance is an off diagonal and it's represented by this uh, number here on the right side of the equation now there's a lot of, of numbers here. You know, there's P variances, right? And there's one half times P times P minus one co unique, you know, or at most unique covariances. You know, it, it's symmetric. So the bottom half is symmetric to the transpose of the top half. Now, but do we want to carry that around? You know, is there a way that we can use one number that kind of summarizes all the variability in our data. And there and there are. There's actually more than, than one. There's several. But we're going to cover two of them. Okay. And I want to go back. Sometimes, okay, so sometimes it's desirable to assign a single value that describes the variation expressed by S. Now, let's, let's go back to the previous video. And when we looked at these uh, plots here, when we were looking at Mahalanova's distance, but notice that the data is sort of encompassed by an ellipse. Now this is two dimensions, so it's an ellipse, but in three dimensions, it, it would be an ellipsoid. Now look at the volume of this ellipse. It has a number, but now if the data were more spread out, then the volume of that ellipse would actually be more, right? Now, the, the tighter the data is around a point, the smaller that volume of the ellipse, you know, the ellipse can be smaller, so the volume, the volume is smaller, okay? So maybe if we can use some sort of volume of this ellipse to describe the overall variability. Well, that's what the generalized variance is. That's what it describes. So, it, it and it's actually the determinant of the covariance matrix. So it's the determinant of S, and that's the generalized variance. And it's a simple geometric interpretation, interpretation for the generalized variance. It's the square root, I mean, the square root of the generalized variance is proportional to the volume of that ellipsoid around a scatter plot of the data about the mean that's centered at the mean. And so this is it. So this uh, uh, quadratic form describes a, an, an, an ellipsoid. In two dimensions, it's an ellipse. So that creates these ellipses around our data. And so the square root of the general, you know, the determinant of S is a constant times the volume of that ellipsoid. So the bigger the generalized variance, the more spread out the data is. You can and you can really think it of is we just need a bigger and a bigger ellipsoid to surround the data. Okay, and that's the generalized variance. Now, the total sample variance is it's the trace of the sample covariance matrix. Now, the, as you remember, the trace is the sum of the diagonal elements. So the total sample variance is you add up all the variances, which is actually the trace of this sample covariance matrix. It's the, it's the diagonals added up. Um, now, you know, one knock against this is that it doesn't incorporate the covariances, you know, to describe this overall variance of our data. But it, it does a little bit. So the more spread out our data are, the bigger the total sample variance will be. So it is a number that sort of describes it. And it turns out that this measure 
will be used when we look at principal components analysis, the total sample variance. Um, a quick R illustration. Uh, well, let's look at the motor trend car road test data. It's a data frame that contains 32 observations, 11 variables. It, it, it's the fuel consumption and characteristics about the cars. What we do is we create a data matrix from the data frame. And I only take columns 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 because they're the most continuous-like. And we're currently only thinking about continuous variables in this class so far. So the generalized sample variance is the determinant of the covariance of y. And it's this number here. It's a big number. The total sample variance is the trace of the covariance matrix. And we calculate it this way. The sum of the diagonal elements of that covariance matrix. And we get a number. And now for illustration purposes, I want to add variance to the data matrix to show you that when we recalculate these, we get bigger numbers. So the first column of the data matrix, which is miles per gallon, I'm going to take it times three and then put it back in that same uh, data matrix. So when now when we calculate the generalized, generalized sample variance, so it's the determinant of the sample covariance matrix, we get a number, and it's actually much bigger than the previous number. And that's because the ellipsoid to, you know, cover our data that's centered at the sample mean is bigger. You know, that ellipsoid is, has a bigger volume to cover it. Now, the total sample variance, which is the trace of the covariance matrix, is, you know, 20,393, which is bigger than our previous one. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.